Webster be here with your next lesson uh, for this Wednesday today. So uh, you guys will be going through this hydraulic and pneumatic lab. Uh, make sure you read through uh, my post before you jump right into this because this uh, lab will require specific equipment. In this case, you need syringes as well as some rubber or plastic tubing to connect some of the syringes. So if you don't have those in your house, that's okay. I've included a YouTube video that will show you the overall results of what you can expect to see from this experiment. Um, but if you do have the equipment, it's worthwhile to go through because it is very cool to see and feel the differences with the different situations that we're going to be going over. But if not, uh, that's okay because I'm not going to be collecting this one in for marks just because I know the equipment is pretty specific for what you need. And if you don't have it, that's okay. Just make sure you watch the other YouTube video to get the information that you need to get. So. In this case, just like before, we are going to be skipping over the purpose. The purpose is just to see the difference between hydraulic and pneumatic uh, devices and systems. And like I said, for the equipment, you're going to be needing syringes. So you're going to need a large syringe, two medium syringes, and a small syringe. If you only have medium syringes, that's fine. You'll be able to complete 75% of the scenarios. You just won't be able to complete the last one, which is okay. Uh, you'll need some sort of tubing to connect them, and then you will also need water and air. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be following along with the scenarios on the next page, which I'll get to in a moment. And with those situations, you're going to follow along with what it asks you to do. And then for those, you're going to record your different observations. So what you saw, what you felt, and you can use drawings to describe what you saw while you were doing the experiment. For the hypothesis, before you go right to the experiment, you're going to make a prediction about what you think will be the difference between the syringes when they're filled with air versus when they're filled with water. So for each situation, you're going to be doing the experiment twice, once with air in the syringes and once with water in the syringes, as well as a big syringe versus a small syringe if you have the ability to do so. So here are your four scenarios. So like I said, for number four, you're not going to be able to do it if you only have the two medium syringes. Uh, but if you have the four different size syringes, that is awesome. And then you can do all four. So for the first one, you're going to take a medium syringe and not connect it to anything. So the piston is the part at the end. It's the only mobile part of the syringe. Uh, and you're going to do this experiment twice like you said. So you're going to pull the syringe out to either suck up the water or take in the air. And then you're going to push that piston back down with your thumb. Uh, you're going to do it twice using the air and then the water. Uh, and it just says do not make a mess. So when you're using the water, make sure you're doing it over a sink or over a bathtub or something that can get wet so you're not spilling water all over the floor or wherever you're doing this experiment. Um, what you're going to notice here is you're probably going to find that you have more resistance when water is in the syringe versus when air is in the syringe. And that's what you're going to want to see because water uh, tends to take up a uh, little less space and the particles are closer together, you have to add a little bit more force in order to expel that out of the syringe. Uh, for number two, a that same medium syringe, so we're only using one syringe right now, covered uh, by an eraser. So for this experiment, you don't have to cover the end with an eraser. You can cover it with uh, just your finger uh, and you'll do the same thing. Just make sure you're making a tight seal on the end of the syringe so that you're preventing any water or air from escaping. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull the end piece out, absorbing the water or absorbing in the air. Then you'll cover the end of the syringe with your finger or with the eraser. Uh, and then you're going to push down on that piston again. What you're going to notice here is a difference in compression. So water, because we know that water particles are a little bit tighter together uh, and air particles are further apart. Uh, what you're going to notice is that you're able to compress those air particles much closer together to a much smaller amount than the water. You're going to hit a certain point of water where those particles can't be compressed anymore and it'll be less compressed than when you're doing it with air. So that's the main thing that we're going to be noticing in that experiment. For the third one, you're now going to use that plastic tubing to connect your two medium syringes together. Once again, if you don't have two or if you not don't have a connector piece, don't worry about this one because uh, we're going to go over it right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to suck up the water in the air in the one 
side, and then the other side is going to remain plunged down with nothing in it. Once you have set, once you've taken in water or taken in air, you're going to connect the two together, and you're going to push down on that piston. What you should see with water or with air is that that water or air will travel down the tubing to the other side and actually push that other syringe's piston out only through the movement of the air. So what you can do is you can push those pistons back and forth and you'll switch sides constantly. And again, what you're gonna see here is you'll notice a little bit more resistance uh, from the water, but you'll probably see a reaction happen more quickly with the water than with the air. Again, you may see something different and that is okay, but that's what you should expect to see. Uh, and then with the final one, you've got a large syringe connected to a small syringe. Again, if you don't have the syringes, don't worry about it. But for this one, what you're actually going to notice is that there's not only a difference between water and air, but with the sizes, you'll find that there's a lot less resistance when you have a large syringe versus a small syringe. And that's due to the surface area of which you're pushing. So because you're pushing more water or more air with the larger syringe, it takes less force to cause a change in the small syringe Whereas with the small syringe, you're having to push with a lot of force or push a lot of the water through uh, in order to get the large syringe to change uh, height of that piston. So that's all that you guys are going to have to do for today. Once again, I've already included a video of this experiment in action with the YouTube video. If you're able to do it yourself, that's way better than just watching the video. But the video is there if you are unable to do the experiment because you don't have the equipment. Don't worry if you don't have the equipment, it is all good. You'll still get the information that you need. Again, you're not handing this in. It's just something cool for you guys to try at home when you're taking a break from any of your other subjects. Uh, and I hope you guys have a good day. Make sure you check back Friday for more information. Have a good one.